So what we have just now seen is we have examined in particular two finite state space absorbing chains, two very special ones, where uh, there are two absorbing boundaries, one at zero, another one at uh, some positive integer b. In the gambler swing problem, we completely solved it, found the absorption probabilities and the uh, you know duration of the game, expected duration of the game. And then what we saw was most interestingly is that these results have interesting implications for the unrestricted uh, simple random walk as well. Then we did sort of the same thing for a slight variant of this model where we looked at what is called the Burton and Ditchin model, again with absorbing barriers. There we calculated uh, the absorption probabilities and then we, most interesting, what we again saw is that these have certain reper repercussions for what we uh, described as unrestricted birth, birth and death chain model uh, for which we actually were able to characterize transients vis-a-vis -vis recurrence uh, by using results that we obtained for the absorbing birth and death chains. So uh, this is where uh, we are going to end as, as far as this absorbing chains are concerned. Our next focus would be uh, on a different problem. Okay, so this is the eighth lecture on Markov chains. We would examine a few special absorbing chains, interesting results, and also have important applications. So we start with a very interesting example. It's often referred to as the gambler's ruin problem. Uh, it's essentially simple random walk, but now with what are called absorbing barriers at 0 and at b. Here b is a fixed positive integer. What's the idea? The idea is you start with a positive initial capital. So remember the uh, simple random walk or the coin tossing game? So you start with a positive initial capital. The coin is tossed. Every time it's heads, you win one rupee and every time it's tail, you lose one rupee and then we keep track on your accumulated fortune as time passes. So that's the general simple random walk. We have seen it. However, here we have a restriction that your net capital is not allowed to go become negative ever. So in course of the game, if and when your accumulated capital hits zero, the game stops to prevent. We have decided on the strategy that if and when your net capital hits B, you will quit. You don't want to play on, keep on playing after you have reached a net capital B. So that's the situation now. So your net fortune can only fluctuate between 0 and B with both 0 and B acting as absorbing barriers in the sense that uh, if it hits 0, the game stops. So we'll pretend as if the chain has got trapped in 0 and the same thing happens when uh, it hits B. So they are both absorbing barriers. So here's a formal description of the chain. The state space, of course, is... 0, 1, 2 through B. And the transition probabilities are like this. The two boundary states 0 and B are absorbing states. So both of them, the transition probabilities are P0, 0, 0 equals PBB B equals 1. For other states, the transition probabilities are the same as the usual random walk, which is that PX, X plus 1 is theta. PX, X minus 1 is 1 minus theta. Here theta represents the heads probability of the coin and this is the case for x between 1 and b minus 1, both inclusive. So as always we will assume that this heads probability theta is strictly between 0 and 1. So once you assume this, this is clearly an absorbing chain with finite state space. Absorbing because of course we have two absorbing states. And the important thing that the other states, that means the states between 1 and b minus 1, are all transient. And simple reason is we know that starting from any of these states, you can, in any of these states, lead to both 0 and b. And therefore, they have to be transient. So starting from any of these transient states, x between 1 and b minus 1, we know from the general theory of absorbing chains, that the chain will, with probability 1, eventually get trapped into either 0 or b. So let's try to find out the probability of the chain getting eventually absorbed or trapped in b, which of course means that 
you end up as a winner. The game stops and you end up coming out with a net capital of B. So let's set alpha x to be the probability that Tb is finite, heating time of B is finite, and this is for any x between 1 and B minus 1. Of course, just for the sake of completeness, let us define alpha B to be 1 and alpha 0 to be 0. These are going to be called boundary conditions or boundary values. As usual, we may set up the system of linear equations as we do in any finite state space uh, absorbing chain uh, and solve. What is interesting here is that by using a nice technique to solve the system of equations, we'll end up getting explicit formulas for these quantities alpha x. So let's proceed towards that. Well, by the usual argument using Markov property conditioning on the first step, one you can get is that for every x, x lying between 1 and b minus 1, alpha x can be written as theta times alpha x plus 1 plus 1 minus theta into alpha x minus 1. This is just by conditioning on what happens in the first step given that you have started from x. So, of course, this equation can be slightly, you know, just make change of sides, etc., etc. Simple algebra gives you that this is same as saying theta times alpha x plus 1 minus alpha x equals 1 minus theta times alpha x minus alpha x minus 1. So, this is true for all x between 1 and b minus 1, both inclusive. Now, to s we, we are supposed to solve for alpha x's. So, we proceed to show how by a nice technique you can actually do that. And the technique is introducing these what are called successive differences of the alphas. So, let dx denote the difference between alpha x and alpha x minus 1. Alpha x minus alpha x minus 1. And we define it for all x between 1 and b. Then the above relation that we have uh, just obtained, namely theta into alpha x plus 1 minus alpha x equals 1 minus theta into alpha x minus alpha x minus 1. You can easily see that what it gives is that for successive dx's with x lying between 2 and b, you have dx equal to gamma times d sub x minus 1, where gamma is just a notation for the ratio 1 minus theta over theta. Now, using this reconciliation recursively, repeatedly, you can easily get that. So, for example, once you have dx equal to gamma into dx minus 1, you can then write dx minus 1 as gamma into dx minus 2. So, that will give you that dx is gamma squared into dx minus 2. And if you keep on repeating this, this is what you get. That dx is gamma to the x minus 1 times d1. And this is true for all 1 between x and b. Now, the, remember the dx's are the successive differences of the alpha x's. So, the alpha x's can be recovered from the successive differences by partial sums. And here is the formula. So, alpha x is alpha 0 plus d1 plus d2 plus etc. to dx. And that formula is true for all x between 1 and d. Now, let us use the boundary value that alpha 0 equal to 0. So, remember f 0 plus this. So, if we use boundary value equal to 0 and also the formula for each of the dx's that dx is d1 times gamma to the x minus 1, you get this. That is alpha x becomes d1 times 1 plus gamma plus etc. gamma to the x minus 1. And this is true for every x between 1 and b. Now, note that this, so the square bracketed sum is just the sum of a geometric progression with common ratio gamma. And of course, we know the formula for sum of a geometric progression, but remember that the formulas are different depending on whether the common ratio is 1 or not 1. So, now let us look at the common ratio gamma. It is 1 minus theta over theta, and it is clear that it will be 1 if and only if theta is half. Otherwise, it's different from 1. Therefore, you would have, have two different formulas. So, the above simplifies 2. So, in case theta is not equal to half, which means gamma is not equal to 1, you have this formula d1 times 1 minus gamma to the x over 1 minus gamma. In the other case, when gamma is 1, all the terms in the square bracket are equal to 1, and there are x many terms, and you end up getting d1 into x. 
So that's the case if theta equals half. Now, you see that we have, we have almost got the formula for alpha x because gamma is given in terms of theta. So the only thing that we need to know is d1. So now we need to use the other boundary condition, which is alpha, beta, alpha b equal to 1. In this formula, that is, you know, in this formula, put x equal to b. We already know that the value of alpha x is b, that's a boundary value, uh, is 1. So using that, you can solve for d1, and the solution turns out to be this. d1 is 1 minus gamma over 1 minus gamma to the b. If theta is different from half, and d1 is 1 over b if theta equals half. Now using this value of d1 into the formula for alpha x that you have already ob obtained, you get the final formula for alpha x for x between 1 and b minus 1 given by this. So you see you got a completely explicit formula. And remember this formula, at least in the case theta is not equal to half, you have gamma in the formula, but the gamma is a function of theta. Gamma is simply 1 minus theta over theta. So if you know what the value of theta is, you know what gamma is, so you know what alpha x is. And of course, in case theta equals half, the formula is much simpler. Alpha x is simply the ratio x over b. Remember, x is your initial capital, and b is the upper barrier. All right, now that we have derived the formula for alpha x, which is the probability of eventual absorption at B starting from X. There was the other absorbing state which is zero. So we can immediately conclude that if beta X denotes the probability that the chain starting from X will eventually get absorbed in state zero, we know that from the general theory of absorbing chains, we know that since there are two absorbing states, therefore the two probabilities alpha X and beta X must add up to one. So we obtain the formula for beta given by this. So beta x in case theta is not equal to half is given by gamma to the x minus gamma to the b over 1 minus gamma to the b. And in case theta is half, beta x is given by b minus x over b. Of course, this is an immediate consequence of a general theory, as I said, of finite state space absorbing chain which asserts that starting from any transient state, the chain will probability 1 with probability 1 get absorbed in one of the absorbing states. Thus, in this example, as I said, alpha x plus beta x equals 1 for every x between 1 and b minus 1. Of course, so we first solve for alpha x using the technique and then use this general result about absorbing chains with finite state space uh, we obtain beta from alpha x. But however, pretend that you do not know this general fact about absorbing chains. Can we then find beta? Well, you can directly try to find the formula for beta x following similar techniques as were used for finding alpha x. You didn't need to use this theory. You could set up again equations for beta x and use the same technique using the successive differences, etc., etc., and solve for beta x directly. Having solved for beta x, now you can deduce that alpha x plus beta x equal to 1. So it's basically reproving a formula for absorbing chains that we already know. Now notice that beta x gives you the probability that starting with an initial capital X, you will eventually hit the state 0. That is the probability that you are ruined when the game ends. Remember, zero means that your net capital is zero, so the game stops and you are completely broke. So that's the reason why this particular problem is often called the gambler's win problem, because it also talks about uh, the probability that the gambler or you would be eventually ruined. Now, here are some important upshots. Even though the above analysis was done after imposing two absorbing barriers at 0 and b, b is positive, on simple random walk. So we had the original simple random walk, no restrictions. So for this particular chain, we imposed restrictions on 0 and b to make them absorbing barriers and then obtained certain results about this absorbing chain. Now some interesting facts about unrestricted simple random walk 
will follow as consequence of what we have just now done for the absorbing uh, simple random walk. First, suppose B be any positive integer. Then for the simple random walk, the px probability that Tb is less than T0, remember B, Tb is the hitting time of B, where B is a positive integer, and T0 is the hitting time of 0. So in the context of unrestricted simple random walk, you are asking, starting from x, what is the probability that b would be hit before hitting 0? And you can easily see that that probability for x strictly between 0 and b is given by nothing but alpha x. Similarly, the px probability that t0 is less than tb is given by beta x. But not only that. Suppose you now take y0 and b. Suppose you take a and b to be integers, where a is strictly less than b. Then again, for the unrestricted, unrestricted simple random walk, you can ask the following question. Suppose the random walk starts from some x between a and b. What is the probability that starting from some x between a and b, what's the probability that b would be hit before hitting a? Or a would be hit before hitting, uh, hitting b? Now, you can verify that those probabilities also obtained are given in terms of the alphas and the betas that you have just computed. So, from the formula for alphas and betas that you have just computed for the absorbing chain, which is simple and random walk with two absorbing boundaries, we get such results for the unrestricted simple random walk. Now, if a and b are integers with a less than b, then for simple random walk, unrestricted, the if you start, if the random walk starts from any x between a and b, then the probability that such a random walk starting from x would remain strictly between a and b for all n greater than or equal to 0, that probability is 0. How does it follow? It follows you just go back to the previous one, which says that tb less than ta is alpha x minus a and px probability that ta is less than tb is beta x minus a. So, but we already know that alpha x minus a plus beta x minus a is 1, which means that the union of these two events, tb less than ta and ta less than tb, the union of these two events have probability, px probability 1. But the union of these two events is simply that either b or a would be hit at some point of time. You can just convince yourself of that. Which means going to the complement, the probability is 0 that the simple random walk starting from a state x strictly between a and b will never hit a or b. That probability therefore becomes 0. So these are some interesting consequences about the simple random walk, unrestricted simple random walk, which emerges from our analysis of the random walk with absorbing barriers. Next we turn our attention to another quantity of interest, which is expected duration of game. As we already saw, the coin tossing game with absorbing barriers at 0 and b will, with probability 1, eventually stop, either with a win or with a win. The question we now ask is, what is the expected duration? How long is the, the you know, game expected to run? before you eventually uh, uh, you know, hit a win or a win. Well, as for any finite state space Markov chain, uh, uh, absorbing chain, we can get this by solving a system of linear equations. We have a general theorem about expected time till absorption. So we could do that. So here, uh, in this particular case, let's actually do that. So as in for general absorbing chains, let mx for x transient, that is between 1 and b minus 1, denote the expected duration of the game given that the initial capital is x. And again, boundary value, let's set m0 and mb both to be equal to 0. Then one can easily see, in fact, these are precisely the uh, equations uh, that you get for this particular absorbing chain, uh, that mx equals 1 plus theta into mx plus 1 plus 1 minus theta into mx minus 1. As always, this is obtained by conditioning on what happens the first step, having started at x. And again, you denote the successive differences of the mx's by dx. 
then you can easily see that the previous equation can actually be reduced to an equation involving the dx's and again you have a reconciliation between the dx and the dx minus 1 and gamma is the same gamma ratio between 1 minus theta and theta. Using this recursively this is slightly uh, more complicated uh, because you have dx equal to gamma dx minus 1 minus a constant 1 over theta. So, but in nevertheless you can still write, uh, do this successively and see that uh, dx becomes, you can express dx in terms of d1 and that's exactly what the next formula does. One has to be only careful that uh, the formula would be different uh, depending on whether gamma equals 1 or gamma is uh, different for 1, which is same thing as saying whether theta is half or theta is different from half and you get two different formulae. We can continue from here. Just to fix ideas, let us, you know, for for uh, keeping things simple, let's consider only the case theta equal to half and try to find a complete solution. So, in the case theta equal to half, the formula is dx equal to d1 minus x minus 1 over theta and use the boundary condition that m0 equal to 0. So, you can again get mx equal to m0 plus d1 plus etc. dx which is same as x d1 minus x into x minus 1 by 2 theta. So, what we have done here is we have used the fact that m0 is 0 and we have used the fact that d1, d2, dx, each of them can be written in terms of d1. So, you write that and then add and it's a simple algebra to see that this is what you get for mx. So, again as before, it is completely known except for d1. So, once we know the value of d1, we know this completely. So, now use the other boundary condition as you have done before that mb is 0. That means in this formula put x equal to b and set mx equal to 0 and then solve for d1. So, you can solve for d1 and then plug that back into this uh, formula for mx and simplify and surprisingly you get this very very simple interesting solution for mx. So, mx is x into b minus x for any x between 1 and b. So, what it says is that if you start with any x between 0 and zero, uh, between 1 and b, then the expected duration of the game is given by x into b minus x. Now, one can, I just for the sake of simplicity, we handled uh, the, the case theta equal to half and showed the complete solution. As an exercise, you can actually also consider the case theta not equal to half because you have the formula for dx there also and you can go through the same algebra and here is the final solution that you can check that you would get for mx. Now, the important point here is that the formula for alpha x or beta x and for mx turn out to be quite different for the two cases theta equal to half and theta not equal to half. Is it surprising? Well, not surprising perhaps because if you recall the unrestricted simple random walk itself behaves quite differently in these two cases. It is recurrent in one case and transient in the other case. Okay, so, it is not perhaps so surprising that the alpha x beta x formulas or the mx formulas you would get two different kinds of formulas for the two cases theta equal to half and theta not equal to half. Anyway, so this is sort of a complete analysis of the gambler ruin problem which is a special absorbing chain. I now want to, since we sort of uh, have understood how, what is the technique used for, you know, uh, you know, sort of handling the gambler ruin model, let us add a little complication to the gambler ruin model. The evolution will be similar to that in the simple random walk case. Again, we will have absorbing boundaries at 0 and at b, which is positive, except that now there is a slight twist. Except that the transition probabilities from the non absorbing states would now be allowed to vary with state. Remember, in the case of uh, Gambler's win problem, for any x other than 0 and b, 
the transition probabilities are going from x to x plus 1 is theta and going to x going from x to x minus 1 is 1 minus theta. So, there is a fixed theta between 0 and 1 for which the transition probabilities are given by this. So, what I am saying is now we allow the transition from x to x plus 1 and the transition probability from x to x minus 1 to also depend on x. So, here is a pre precise description. This is often called the birth and death chain with two absorbing barriers. So, state space is as in the case of gambler ruin problem 0 to b integers and now the transition probabilities are for 0 and b we want to keep them absorbing. So, p 0 0 and p b b are both 1, but now the difference is for x between 1 and b minus 1 the transition probability of going from x to x plus 1 is theta sub x and not a fixed theta and p x x minus 1 is of course 1 minus theta x. So, that is what I meant when I said that these probabilities are now allowed to vary with x. It is still a Markov chain. Now, we assume that for every x between 1 and b minus 1, the theta x's are strictly between 0 and 1. Clearly, it makes it an absorbing chain with 0 and b as absorbings and others are transient. Of course, the special case when theta x's are all equal to a fixed theta. Uh, then it is uh, just the gambler's ruin model. So, you can think of this as a slight extension of the gambler's ruin model. So, again as for any finite state space abso absorbing chain, this particular chain starting from any transient state will with probability 1 get eventually absorbed at either b or 0. What we want to compute for 1 uh, x between 1 and b minus 1 is the probability alpha x that the chain starting from x will get eventually absorbed at b just like in the gambler's main problem. So, the notation is the same alpha x is that probability. As before set boundary conditions alpha 0 to be 0 and alpha b to be 1 and denoting dx to be alpha x minus alpha x minus 1 and now gamma x is 1 minus theta x by theta x. So, now it is not a fixed gamma, gamma changes with x because thetas change with x then you can run through the same uh, ideas as in the case of gambler's ruin problem and see that now you get dx to be gamma x minus 1 into dx minus 1 and now if you use it recursively you end up getting gamma 1 gamma 2 into gamma x minus 1 into d1. Remember in the earlier case gambler's ruin problem all the gammas were one single gamma and therefore the quantity in bracket was just gamma to the power x minus 1. Now, instead of being gamma to the x minus 1, it is a product of x minus 1 many different gammas. That is the only difference. So, now by using the boundary value alpha 0 equal to 0 and writing alpha x's as partial sums of the dx's, exactly as we did for gambler's main problem, you get end up getting this formula for alpha x. Naturally, a little more complicated. This is no longer a sum of a geometric progression. But now, at least one thing is clear, this formula is completely known except for d1 because the gammas are all determined by the thetas. Now, we use exactly as in the case of gambler's ruin problem, the other boundary value namely alpha beta alpha b equal to 1. So, plug in x equal to b, set alpha b to be 1 and then solve for d1. So, solve for d1 and then put that value of d1 in this, in this formula for alpha x and you get this final formula. Naturally, a uh, little bit more complicated, but nevertheless you do have an explicit formula and recall that this formula depends only on the specified parameters thetas. So, once you know all the theta x's, you know all the gamma x's, so this quantity is completely known. Complicated, but it is completely known. So, and again as before the probabilities of eventual absorption at state 0 can now be easily decided. It is uh, beta x equal to 1 minus alpha x for all x between 1 and b minus 1 and again as an exercise you can also try to directly find out beta x by going to the same kind of algorithm. But, so that is that is uh, basically analysis of this particular absorbing chain, but the point is as we saw in the case of gambler's ruin problem and this is of much greater importance is that this formula for absorbing button ditching had significant consequences for 
an unrestricted but button they change. So I'm going to now define that. We have never come across this example of a Markov chain called button dead chain unrestricted. So consider the Markov chain with infinite state space, namely 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. So all non negative integers. And transition probabilities are given by P01 equal to 1. And for any x greater than or equal to 1, from x you go to x plus 1 with probability theta x and x to x minus 1 with probability 1 minus theta x. So that part of the story is sort of like random work except that the probabilities depend on x. But at 0 the behavior is from 0 you always go to 1 with probability 1. So sometimes one thinks of it as a reflecting barrier at 0. Anyway, so we assume that all the theta x's are strictly between 0 and 1. Then you can easily verify that the chain is irreducible. Therefore, from the general theory of irreducible chains, we know that either all states are recurrent or all traits, states are transient. Question is, which one is true? Just like we had for simple random walk also, we knew all states are recurrent and all states are transient. And then we could show that depending on whether theta is equal to half or theta is not equal to half, uh, in the case of random walk, all states are recurrent if theta is half, transient if theta is not equal to half. But here there is no fixed theta. So how do we decide on that? Well, as always, we focus on one state, namely here in this case, we'll focus on state 0 and examine recurrence transients of 0 only. But most importantly, we'll do that by now using results obtained from the absorbing bar tended chain. So it's uh, the absorbing bar tended going the other way around. The results obtained from the absorbing bar tended chain would give us results for the for the unrestricted button dead chain. So denote as usual T sub x to be hitting time of the state x as in the general theory of Markov chains. One can then easily see that for any integer b greater than 1, p1 probability that means conditional or starting from state 1, the probability that 0 would be hit before hitting the state b that is nothing but what we had earlier called beta 1. That is the absorbing uh, button dead chain starting from 1 gets eventually absorbed at 0. So this probability is same as that beta 1. And we know the formula for beta 1 already. It's given by that. Now, since the chain moves up or down by only steps of size 1, you should be able to convince yourself that given that the chain starts from 1, the random variables t sub b are strictly increasing at b increases. And t sub b goes to infinity as b goes to infinity. Essentially what I am saying is that if the chains, this particular chain starts from 1, then t10 has to come before t11. And that is because since the chain you know, moves up or down by steps of 1, there is no way that the chain can, starting from 1, can hit 11 before hitting 10. That's impossible. So that says that the random variables t sub b have to be strictly increasing as b increases. And of course, since they are strictly increasing integers, they have to increase to infinity. As a consequence, conditional on the chain starting from state 1, if you look at the events t0 less than tb, these events monotonically increase because tbs are increasing. So these events would be monotonically increasing. t0 less than tb would imply that t0 is less than tb plus 1. So these events monotonically increase and they increase the event that t0 is finite. Therefore, by continuity of conditional probability, we have p1 probability that t0 less than infinity is limit b goes to infinity of p1 probability that t0 is less than tb. But we have a formula for the p1 probability of t0 less than tb. Using now the above formula, we conclude that p10 is 1 or p10 is less than 1 according as this series diverges or converges. That you can see for the, from the formula. p1 probability that t1 is less than tb is given by 1 minus 1 over that sum. So if that sum diverges, that means this 
partial sums as b goes to infinity, these partial sums would go to infinity. And therefore, the second term in that expression, 1 over that, will go to 0, which means you will have p1, probably that t0 less than tb, as b goes to infinity, will go to 1. And therefore, rho 1, 0 would be 1. On the other hand, if that series di converges, then the second term, 1 over that partial sum, will go to something positive. And therefore, 1 minus that would be less than 1. And therefore, rho 1, 0 would be less than 1. So therefore, rho 1, 0 equals 1 or less than 1, strictly less than 1, according as this series diverges or converges. Now, since starting from 0, you can only go to 1 with probability 1, you can easily convince yourself that rho 0, 0 is no different from rho 1, 0. So, but we have already obtained condition for rho 1, 0 to be equal to 1 or less than 1. So that condition will be the same for rho 0, 0 to be equal to 1 or less than 1, which is recurrence or transients of 0. So we conclude that 0 and therefore all states of the birth and death chain are recurrent or transient according as whether the above series diverges or converges. So you have to look at the theta axis, the given theta axis for the chain, then compute the ratios gamma axis and then consider this particular series and examine whether the series diverges or converges and then you would know depending on that whether the chain would have all states recurrent or all states transient. So what we have just now seen is we have examined in particular two finite state space absorbing chains, two very special ones where uh, there are two absorbing boundaries, one at 0, another one at uh, some positive integer b. In the gambler's win problem, we completely solved it, found the absorption probabilities and the uh, you know duration of the game, expected duration of the game. And then what we saw was most interestingly is that these results have interesting implications for the unrestricted uh, simple random walk as well. Then we did sort of the same thing for a slight variant of this model where we looked at what is called the birth and death chain model, again with absorbing barriers. There we calculated uh, the absorption probabilities and then we, most interestingly, what we again saw is that these have certain repercussions for what we uh, described as unrestricted birth, birth and death chain model uh, for which we actually were able to characterize transients vis-a-vis -vis recurrence uh, by using results that we obtained for the absorbing birth and death chains. So uh, this is where we are going to end as, as far as this absorbing chains are concerned. Our next focus would be on a different problem.